You're listening to Side by Side with Kathy Wilson, Episode 1, The Encounter. Would that bus never get to our stop? My guide dog Melody and I stood waiting in the numbing cold, wondering how much longer we would have to wait. We were somewhere between shivers and frostbite, It had not been this cold when we left after lunch to do a bit of shopping, but time had moved on and Mother Nature lowered her thermostat a wee bit. And that's when Melody and I decided that the home fires were calling, and I noticed Melody was standing in her erect at attention stance. She was doing everything but saluting, so I gathered my shopping bags. I knew that our bus was close by. Melody was an expert when it came to getting on the bus. Sure enough, there it was. And no sooner had it stopped than my girl was taking me to the door and up the steps, lickety-split. The bus driver greeted us and asked if Melody was feeling the cold today. Oh, yes. Her hot rum toddy can't come too soon. The bus seemed crowded, and I followed my dog's competent stride until she stopped beside a seat. I checked to be certain that the seat was available, and then sat. Melody folded herself under the seat where I was sitting. My thoughts were focused on my perfect companion. She had wasted no time leading me up the steps and quickly locating an empty seat. Just like that, things were better, and I could feel myself gradually thawing out. Mel rested her loving head on my knee, and I absently stroked her smooth blonde coat. My thoughts fell back several years to another bus ride. Just as now, I had stood at the bus stop waiting for my ride, but there was no melody beside me only a long white cane to aid me on my travels. I lived in a sighted world, where my eyes fell far short of the competence I needed to get along. That other time, it was a summer day, not a frigid February. The time while I waited seemed short, and when the bus stopped, I used the cane to find the steps up into the bus. I greeted the driver and he told me about an empty seat on the left. This was very helpful. And once I located the seat, I plopped my bottom down only to leap up in unexpected mortification. There, in what I fully believed to be an empty seat, sat a guy expressing total surprise from every pore. I'm sitting here now. He put great emphasis on the I'm. Beside him on the seat was placed a case of Molson Canadian. This didn't allow me any space whatsoever, so you can certainly understand why I do not drink Molson's even now, more than 20 years later. At this point, the wrong passenger informed me that I would have to sit somewhere else. Do you always sit on guys' laps? By then I summoned what remained of my dignity and answered, Yes, but usually I don't land on such lumpy knees. It felt more like a pincushion than a lap. I was able to locate another seat. This time it really was empty, and I could hear laughter from some of the passengers. Kathy doesn't make a fool of herself every day but often enough so that she doesn't need much practice. I considered the possibility of taking a bow as I sat down. My critical self repeated a statement that has been burned into my brain over the years. That would not have happened if you were with a guide dog. Yeah, fairies dance in my garden too. My brain wasn't finished with its brutal reminders yet. Don't forget the time on the cruise ship. You sure made an ass of yourself that time. My brain was really getting wound up at this point. Oh, come on. That could have happened to anyone, vision or not. It was dark on deck. 
Yes, a black velvet sky over the Caribbean with a crescent moon offering romance from above. Could I be blamed if my heart turned to love and lust? My husband Ralph was standing close to me, and I extended a cautious hand in front of Ralph and gave a very private part of him a gentle squeeze. I hoped that he would notice. Want to go to our cabin for some fun? All at once, Ralph was racing away, and I was left wondering what I did wrong that time. Then the full realization of what I did just managed to hit me with the speed of a falling meteor. Ralph was standing some distance from me, gazing into the sky. Why did you move? You were right next to me only a minute ago. Ralph glanced at me briefly and then went back to his stargazing once more. Here, you can really get a wonderful view of the night skies. I changed my location a bit to get a better look of that constellation. I wasn't sure which one it was. Anyone else would have kept their blunder hush-hush. Not this woman. No, I felt the need to confess all to my dear star-struck husband in the hopes that he would have some sympathy. You did what? Who was this guy? My mistake certainly distracted him from his astronomical pursuits. But utter astonishment and then mild amusement seemed to be my only reward for total honesty. I felt Melody's warm breath on my cold hands. She always offered sympathy. If she had been a part of my life then, tender kisses would have showered my blushing cheeks. But that incident took place long before I received my first canine guide. The bus reached our stop and Melody led me away. She took me across the traffic-laden street checking the intersection to be certain it was safe to cross. We were on the last leg of our journey home. There was our driveway and Melody reached the front door at our raised bungalow. The key in hand, I opened our door and felt the warmth bathing my chilled face and fingers. Gypsy watchdog extraordinaire welcomed Melody and I as we entered our sanctuary. It took no time to unbuckle Melody's harness and hang it on the wall. Treats were expected by Melody, Gypsy, as well as that annoying calico cat funny face. So before I put on the kettle for tea, my buddies had to be satisfied or there could be a chorus of canines sing the blues with some feline warbles thrown in too. The kettle was filled, the teapot heated, and my cup was ready for the first splash of Earl Grey. Once more this brain dusted off a memory and hit the enter key. Before the dog showed me the way, I would explain to the many people who asked me why I used a cane and not a guide dog. I like to do things myself. It's no fun having someone else direct your life. I like to do things where, how, and when I decide to do so. It gets really complicated when you need to consider what someone else prefers. A dog would just be more of the same. Had I been born with a more dependent personality, things would have been more simple. This brings me to the incident that changed all that. It took place uptown. There are a lot of annoying and interfering people uptown. This fact had failed to occur to me before. I was tapping my way down the street with my cane. I always called this particular mobility device Irving. Why Irving? It just looked like an Irving to me. From somewhere behind me came the call of a woman. Her voice was annoyed and was gaining on me quickly. She sounded as though she would pass me on my right, so of course I stepped well to my left to give her lots of room. Trouble is, 
she didn't pass. She stopped right beside me. You walked right through that intersection. You didn't stop to check for cars. You just pushed your way along. You could have caused an accident. You are a menace. People like you should be kept in a home. Then the woman was gone. Vanished. I didn't have a chance to say a word. No, it wouldn't have stopped at one word. There were plenty of things I wish there had been a chance to say. There was a short street where I had not stopped. There was rarely a vehicle on the street. It was not well used, and there had been nothing on it when I crossed it earlier. What bothered me the most about the incident was the blatant hostility. All the way home, I considered the woman's words, and what, if anything, I should do. My excessive need to be independent was fighting for its life with my sincere wish that I not put anyone in danger while following my own path. I explained all of my thoughts and worries to my husband on my return home. He really didn't see my difficulty. When I wanted to go somewhere, he would take me. Where was the problem? Great idea. Just throw my independence out the window. You would become my chauffeur and my dog guide. You would be giving up your freedom and I would be the loser. No one gains with that idea, Ralph. You have better things to do and would resent my needs. Ralph was perplexed. No one is completely free. Everyone has to depend on somebody else. Yes, that is true. But with this disability, it is far too easy to do nothing but lean on others. I need to pull my own weight. I won't be a prisoner to my own disability. I would like to apply for a dog guide. Thus began the most difficult decision I have made up until now. The path of independence, trust, and finally love all came about because of one irate, cruel woman. If I knew who she was, I would thank her, then kick her backside. So I left the main road and found a much better path to travel. My stories all come from that one decision I made. It has been a difficult road, but full of love and humor. Above all else, I found independence and saw dependence in a different light.